My everyday carry setup was the main way I interacted with my gear on a daily basis in 2015, and so I'm happy to provide an update for the beginning of 2016 of the stuff that I carried the most as well as my newest stuff in a quick and dirty format and with some really interesting updates and evolutions since 2014, the last time I did this video. As I did last year, let's get started with knives. Now the most carried knife for me of 2015, beginning of 2016, is the Spyderco Techno. I just did a video of the carbon fiber scale upgrade that I was able to get for only 40 bucks from a maker on Instagram. This is a great way to lighten up a very nice, useful knife with a very stout blade. It's a fun, easy knife to carry and I have really enjoyed it. Now, my newest knife is actually an old knife. This is the old, and I've got the safety on here, what a pain, the Kershaw Leak. Oh, safety still engaged. Brilliant. So, this is a real classic as far as everyday carry knives go. Honestly, <laughs> it feels pretty obsolete to me in some respects, but I have it for an upcoming video that I'm working on. I'm sort of on the fence about having standard knives in my collection, like, you know, a mini grip, uh, maybe a paramilitary too, something like this Kershaw Leak. Uh, knives that every collector should probably have experience in the hand at some point. Anyway, this is the newest one that I got. But the one that is newest and I'm actually really excited about and that I carry a lot is the ZT0808, which really feels like the big gnarly uh, brother of the Leak. Maybe no surprise to anyone, but my most carried watch of 2015 is the Hamilton Khaki Mechanical. This is Old Faithful for me. This is the watch that I've had now for just about five years, not quite yet. I think it'll be five years in March. And it has just takes a licking and keeps on ticking, as they uh, used to say in the Timex ads. It's just a great watch. And uh, every year I love to see the little bit of new patina and wear and the way that it's just taking on my experiences on a daily basis. It's just an awesome watch. This new strap here is a horn wean strap from Worn and Wound. Soft, well made, just a really comfortable strap. My newest watch is the Orient Bambino version 3. This is a gorgeous affordable dress watch. Just look at the dome. Take a look at the uh, delightful 1960s era minimalist hands. Just an excellent watch with a ton of character for a great price. I'm definitely looking forward to doing the review on this watch. And it just shows that there are amazing watches to be had at great values if you're willing to buy from Japan. And I think you're really missing out if you're not willing to consider that. Here's a little bonus as far as watches go. This is an Omega Constellation Vintage. And this was actually a gift from a friend. And he is the original owner of this watch and he had it for decades before he gave it to me. Just was really honored to be able to receive this watch. Uh, as you can see, it is not running. Uh, it is actually an automatic, but it needs a service. I'm just uh, waiting to spend the money to get it done absolutely right. It is just a treasure for me and I'm really excited to have this in my collection. An absolute keeper. By the way, the nicest watch strap that I received for 2015 was the Worn and Wound Shell Cordovan one-piece strap. Absolutely stunning strap in a tan leather, and I will be incorporating this into my next strap video. Definitely a winner. Made in New York City, just an amazing strap. Really a good value too compared to some of the other Hornweed straps that are out there on the market. Okay, for pens, my newest pen of 2014 was also my most carried pen. This is the Tactile Turn Shaker, and it is an awesome clicky pen with a completely well thought out design. Great lightweight, this is an aluminum pen, machined by a guy named Will Hodges, who does just a fabulous job. One little complaint, the clicky does sometimes get hung up if you if you are pushing on it from the side, so that's just one thing to be aware of with this pen. I've had people ask me about it. It is a problem with mine on occasion, but for the most part, the pen functions just perfectly. Newest to me pen was the Max Madco bolt action pen, and this is the lightweight version, which is an aluminum pen. We have a phrase in my family, I don't really know if it makes sense, but we say light glass when it's really smooth, and this is just light glass. It is unbelievably smooth, ridiculous. It just doesn't feel like there's any friction at all. 
And the best part about this is that it is 22 grams, so it like completely disappears in your pocket. It is unbelievable. Made in the USA, and it's probably the nicest bolt action pen that I've handled so far. Compared to the Shaker, it's just a much um, thinner pen, and the relative length is just about the same. It is a real featherweight. My wallet switched from the Saddleback Leather Wallet to the Leatherworks Minnesota Wallet. This is just a vegetable tanned leather with a natural finish, and it basically is just a slightly more compact wallet than the Saddleback, which was already perfectly fine, but I wanted to try seeing if I could just go maybe the next size down. It has just obviously two spots for credit cards and then the central pocket here. Definitely very well made, and the thing about vegetable tanned natural dyed leather is just that it's going to take on a very unique character, and it definitely has been interesting seeing how the patina is slowly adding up on this thing. Honestly, sometimes it isn't always the prettiest in my opinion, but I'm trying to hold out and see what this thing's going to look like after a good long while, and I'm cautiously optimistic. Definitely a well-made wallet though from Leatherworks Minnesota. My keychain setup is largely unchanged except for one very important update from 2014. So we've got the Leatherman style PS here, key smart, Pangea Designs, key clip with a bottle opener, and then this. This is easily the most carried flashlight of 2015. So the Beta QR version 2 has two different stages, 15 lumens and 60 lumens. 15 lumens is great for like finding stuff in a bedroom or in a basement without washing out your eyesight. And 60 lumens, the second stage is great for finding something in a parking lot, for example, if you drop a glove or something. It is a really nice flashlight and really well made. This one is aluminum. They come in a few different types of metals. Like this flashlight, it's really taken a great patina actually, but by far the best part about it is just the mechanism to keep it connected to your keychain, which is just a peach, brilliant design, and easily my most carried light of 2015. My newest light for me was the Magismo Sapphire, which I already talked a little bit about in my Gear of the Year video, so I'm not going to get too much into it. I am kind of behind in my flashlight game, actually. There was a bunch of great new lights that came out in 2015 from Surefire, from Olight, and uh, higher-end lights like the Muishan Aeon Mark III. That's definitely one thing I'd like to get caught up on for 2016, but this light, which is a custom light, has only one setting and is just about the nicest constructed object that I've ever held. When I wasn't carrying a style PS on my keychain, or not carrying my keychain, I was often carrying a Victorinox SD, and I did get a little bit into collecting the Alox versions of the SD this year. The big advantage of the SD is that they are super skinny, so if you want to like fit them in the coin pocket in your pants, it really is a peach for that. I did often carry it in a cute little sheath here <laughs> which still fit in a coin pocket just fine and ensure that it didn't rub up against other gear in my pocket this is just a way underestimated piece of gear that i've talked about quite a bit on my channel and i really just need to do a video showing you all of my victoria knox sds and explain why it's such a great piece of kit for everyday carry this is the scout leather works pocket sheath basically a great combination for a flashlight and a old slip joint. I had a nice little slip joint collection this year, which I sold to help fund my 65 Mustang, and I will hopefully be rebuilding that collection in 2016. And this sheath was awesome for carrying slip joints around, uh, especially smallest slip joints like the 15 pattern. And uh, with a flashlight and a slip joint, especially during the summer when I was walking a lot of places, wasn't driving as much, it was really handy. One area I didn't see a lot of change for 2015 was my choice of a conceal and carry firearm. Maybe no surprise is considering how amazing this SIG P938 Equinox is. Both in the looks department and in the carry department for me it absolutely checks off all my boxes. It has been absolutely reliable at the range too as I've been continuing to keep up in being able to operate this manual of arms. It is an excellent firearm and I'm very proud to carry it on a regular basis. I have continued to use my Nate Squared Tactical uh, inside the waistband holster. This is a really nice holster. It is starting to finally show some wear to a degree that I'm thinking I need to replace it with something else. And actually, I've been carrying it this winter quite a bit with my Galco Light 
pocket holster. This is just a really nice, simple suede leather holster that I've previously reviewed. Very affordable too, by the way. But I am looking to get a kind of higher end holster for the SIG in 2016. Here's an assortment of everyday carry accessories that I used quite a bit. I didn't carry my Weeha Torx bits, but I did use them frequently to maintain my knives, so they're definitely something I recommend. Same goes for my Hops 9 lubricating oil. I guess I'm kind of old fashioned. I use gun oil to keep my knives nice and smooth, but they definitely do a great job of keeping rust off and keeping everything running smoothly. I like that a lot. Another tool that I didn't carry a lot, but I definitely like is this worn and wound little um, keychain strap changer. This keychain strap changer is just really well made. It's got a little bit of knurling here. You can see that I'm operating it with one hand and if I was a real nut I'd probably put this on my keychain but I'm just not changing straps quite enough. Uh, Panorissi guys, this is definitely a must-have item if you're changing your straps five times a day or something. This is just more of a novelty item. This is the Tom Crine Worry Stone. I'm not really into the pocket frosting thing, but honestly, this sort of has a different aspect, maybe a, kind of a soothing aspect for me. This is hand-hammered copper, just a really beautiful handmade little item. I also like carrying some kind of power bank with me. Uh, I have my Native Union power bank here. This is actually a different one than I originally reviewed because the original one that I had broke, but I got in touch with Native Union and they did eventually send a new one to me. This is the second one that I had, got it for free. This is just a Railback one, has a USB and then a lightning port on the other side. Just an, one that I picked up when this was uh, in disrepair and waiting for a replacement and I think this was like 10 bucks, but it's actually a really great form factor even compared to the Native Union and definitely something that I carry in a jacket pocket during the winter, especially I never want my phone to die during the cold weather. If there was an accident, it would just be very problematic. So I always carry a power bank with me during the winter. Last but not least, this is my Bradley Mountain Wax Canvas Pouch, and I just thought I'd show it to you. I do use this for all of my travels, and it is continuing to take on some nice patina, which I highly recommend it as kind of an alternative way to carry knives and pens when you're traveling. As a YouTuber who's trying to always do a better job on my channel, I was regularly looking for interesting places to do shots, maybe places where I could make commentary, and so I always had my iPhone 5 Plus with me, and I often carried it in this Magpul Field IPS case. I took the leap this year to get into digital SLR videography, so I picked up a Canon 60D with a 18 to 135 millimeter kit lens, and I have some more lenses coming in to hopefully bring some better footage, especially when I'm talking in front of the camera. I'm kind of, this is my skunk words project basically right now on the channels, learning digital SLR in a more serious way. I've always, I've always had kind of an outside interest in it, but now I'm going to get serious, really figure this out. A lot of guys are running these Canon rigs pretty successfully, and I got this for a great price. So I'm excited to be hopefully carrying around a digital camera in my backpack pretty regularly. I have been using a road level ear mic when I've been doing a lot of videos getting in front of the camera. I have a new video micro mic which will attach to this digital SLR when I'm getting in front of the camera in the future. So hopefully that will be an improvement, but I do intend to use this lavalier, lavalier in some circumstances it works pretty well. And I always have to carry extra cables with that too just because it's kind of short. I just decide to run a hard line right to my phone and it's just a little simpler that way. I have a variety of tripods that I use, but I do like these Archon tripods quite a bit. They come with a really great head to attach to my phone, and I'm actually using that right now on my tripod, and I need to get more of them apparently. So these are really nice, really well made, and hold a iPhone 6 Plus very easily. Well, all right, I hope you enjoyed the gear parade here. Make sure to give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed seeing what I'm running these days. If I have any revolutionary updates before 2017, I'll definitely make sure to post and let you know. I'm going to often be posting everyday carry updates at the end of my videos. I kind of like that little format. I've done that in a few other previous vids. For the most part, though, I'm not really a revolutionary everyday carry guy. I like to go with solid, well-made things that I can rely on that are fairly proven and things that I know I'm going to be able to enjoy for a long time. Quality items. Thanks a lot for your time, and if you're new to the channel, I just would like to invite you to subscribe. Thanks a lot.